hi guys welcome back to my channel how are you guys doing today how is your week going i know it's just the beginning of the week a new video <laughs> you know um but how's your week going how are you doing how's work let me know let's chat in the comment section what's new with you you know <laughs> what's going on just me let me know <laughs> let me know in the comment section if you are new here and this is my first video you're seeing hello hi i encourage you to go through the channel and you know check out some more fun videos or informative videos that you can find helpful in today's video i'll be sharing an experience that i had with a racist so um obviously being in the uk um for me personally and for a lot like quite a number of people that you know i've spoken with racism is very subtle here they're not very very loud about it you know but they do it in a very subtle way so sometimes you even miss it you know in the way you relate to people especially at work you know so if you're a student at school obviously everybody's very cautious everybody's mindful and careful but the reality is at work really that nobody actually sent you know so um this experience was um this 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 happened to me at work when i just i just started working with um a new agency at the time first of all it's black history month and i feel like this topic is something that we need to create awareness or at the very least it's something that we need to speak about share our stories and you know share our experiences to help someone that would know what to do or to help someone act better than we did when we experienced it so this is my goal for sharing this story today and obviously what better time to share the story than black history month so yeah <laughs> so this is my contribution to the black history month i already know that i'm a nigerian and you know uh and i moved to the uk to study last year and i've, I've spent about eight, i've spent over a year now in the uk and so um the first time in my life that i would ever experience racism is in this country because obviously back home, who, who wants to be racist to me everybody's the same skin type skin even even tribalism that is a thing in nigeria so to say is not like i don't think well i i never experienced it so let me be mindful of people that have probably experienced that so i i never experienced tribalism the first time i experienced racism in the uk was one day i was coming from work and i boarded the bus and i was in the bus you know i was the only black girl in the bus and there was this group of boys that came into the bus and you know they were teenagers obviously and they were being playful everywhere obviously i was minding my own business sitting close to the window in the bus and looking away and all so i guess the boy was just bored basically and then he was trying to get my attention from afar where he was this boy cannot be more than 13 or 14. he was trying to get my attention and i i genuinely didn't mind him because i've tried to stay i don't want trouble i don't want anything that will make me and you know somebody talk and then the boy was just looking at me in a very funny way trying to make face he was making different he was making faces at me i didn't i didn't mind him i didn't i i, I totally ignored him and then the next thing he came to sit right in front of me and then he looked at me for a while i still didn't mind him i didn't look at him and then the boy looked at me and he was like I'm your boss and like <laughs> it was so funny he just looked at me and said i am your boss <laughs> he said, I, <laughs> because it was, it was it was just really really funny and very silly i don't know who trained him i don't know where you know what was running through his mind but i was just furious i'm like are you okay i just asked him i said are you okay he said, and and i had a bottle of water with me and you know i was like if i knock this thing on your head <laughs> obviously like the africa auntie that i am <laughs> oh my god i don't even know if you guys are finding this funny but uh, you know like i i literally did that i did i did obviously i didn't say that i just i just did like when knock this thing on your head and then he was like oh you want to hit me hit me i'm gonna hit you so bad that he was not saying rubbish i said you're, you're not serious <laughs> And then and then I just ignored him after that. Then he just kept saying, You are my you are my slave. I'm your I'm your boss. You are my slave. And I was just like, Oh only oh, okay. I did I I genuinely, you know, like not like I was hurt, but I was just like, Who could have fed this boy junk? Because obviously you're a child, you don't know what you're saying. And you're saying absolute rubbish. <laughs> I was a secondary school child looking for trouble on the bus. And I know that, you know, with children in this place you just have to be careful. So 
I genuinely just ignored him and even though I was hurt, I was just glad that he came down before I did and even though he was still making faces and trying to get at me, I didn't let him get at me. After the bottle, after saying I will knock this bottle, I just ignored him and left him alone. But when I got home, I was now sharing with my husband. I don't even know if I shared with my husband, but I know I, I shared with someone. And the person was like, ah, next time when <laughs> like, those children are very naughty. And next time when you say that, when he says I'm your boss or you're a slave, just tell him that you're a pig. That that pain <laughs> brings them more. <laughs> I'm like, please, I can't be having battle of words with a baby or with a child, literally. But obviously that cannot happen in Nigeria because it's dirty knock. You know, <laughs> it's dirty knock you will collect because of your, who born you? Why will you? you know disrespect someone like that that is a stranger so obviously that was the first time i experienced anything close to racism and you know because it was just a one-off and on the bus i didn't let it get to me at all but the main story that is the, that is the reason for this video was one that happened to me at work and that was really deep for me you know like i actually cried if you know me personally you know that i'm a cry baby and i cry at the slightest things because i was so hurt i was so so hurt on that day and i i felt really bad i'm glad like i was glad the way i am doing this but let, let me just you know share the story so um it started on this faithful day you know i got a shift with i i, I work with an agency so while i was in school i was working with different agencies you know um so this particular agency is a support agency so you support it's, it's for you know people supported living is different from it's a bit different from care um usually most of the people in supported living homes you are just you know they are capable they are able to make their decision you're just supporting them because maybe they just have a little bit of sickness or just one sickness but they can make their decisions they can ask you for food you know sometimes they want to go out you follow them out so that's what supported living is in in, in summary so um on this facebook day i was posted to a site that was my it was my first time on that site site actually um i worked with it's it's the same man usually agency staff work with when when they push you to that site so the first time i worked there I, I was at the man's place because it was my first time now i didn't i didn't meet any manager or anybody you know i, I was just led you know from the instruction i was given i was just led to his flat so i got to his flat i introduced myself and i sat down you know asked him what he wanted to eat engaged him the man you know could talk and everything but he had um I think his sickness was schizophrenia or something. I don't know. I really don't know how to call all those things, but something around that place. Something something like that Sha, was what's wrong with him. And so he, he can communicate well, but he just has some excesses. And, you know, they were not too much to manage. So obviously, if you if you want to eat, you ask him, oh, what would you like to eat? He'll tell you what he wants to eat. You make it for him. Then maybe you do his laundry. He doesn't go anywhere. It's not like he's dirty. It's just the clothes that he wear he wears that you do then you change the tv for him he likes you know for you to um you know do certain activities for him so things that you're supposed to do for him so you know you do it for for him but most of the time it's it's very very easy and soft so they're they not doing much most of the time so that day like my first time there there was this other girl that was next door and she's not white first of all she she's, she's not white she's um she's a mixed breed <laughs> <laughs> mixed breed or oh, oh sorry she's biracial so um she's biracial and she's mixed with african funny enough funny enough her father is Ghanaian and her mother is white british so she she's not white she's not black she's in the middle you know how she's like my 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 kind of yellow <laughs> she's my my kind of yellow so you know because it was my first time on this site, I didn't know, you know, anything. I didn't know what to do or what to expect. But one thing I know is that in this place, you respect people's privacy. Even if you they are sick, you must ask for consent. You must respect their privacy and everything. So I know that from my experiences on other sites, you always close a service user's apartment. Service user is, you know, the person you are watching after or the patient you are, you are working with. We call them service user. So you must always shut the door or, you know, like you must respect their privacy. So I got there on that day. The girl just looked at me from head to toe. I was like, oh, um, I should leave this door open. I shouldn't close the door to his flat. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's how they do it. Or maybe she was the manager or anything. I didn't even bother. So she would she just pop in and pop out whenever she wanted, you know, without knocking. But I noticed that 
when any other staff came into the flat they would knock when they are going out they'll jam the door then she'll come next then she made the door locked she'll be like why did i lock it i'm like oh i didn't lock it it was someone else i said leave it open and all so it happened the very first time my very first time on the site but i didn't count it as anything <laughs> because i didn't know what was the norm on that site so the second hex the second time i encountered her which was the time i had the issue with her i came very early that morning it was an 8 a.m to 9 p.m shift so i i got there obviously before eight by the time i got there the guy's flat was leaking there was um water leaking from someone's bedroom upstairs and you know different places were leaking and i got there the person that was there they didn't think to put bucket or things around so when i got there instinctively i just went to the bathroom got bowls got some bowls from the kitchen and then you know now i just tried to put the bowls and the buckets everywhere so that the water doesn't flood the whole apartment and obviously nothing can be done until maintenance come comes maintenance will not come until two hours time so obviously we had to manage the situation and then the man you know we had to tell the man to stay in his room instead of staying in the living in his lounge where the water thing was happening it now got to the point where the water was the leakage was going to the electric house that's the tv and everything so i had to go and call the people next door and that was this girl again unfortunately for me <laughs> so i oh i was like oh please could you help me you know you know do something about this thing it's coming here to the tv okay so she called someone else that was a staff because you know they're they full staff she she was a full staff me i was an agency staff so that means my own is on and off it's whenever there's shift i go there but she works permanently on the side so um she called someone else they were able to remove the tv and all so while she was doing all that she was doing she she mistakenly threw a a, a bucket of water on the floor so he poured on the chair and everything immediately i grabbed the mop i started mopping and all she left everything for me ideally it was a mess she was supposed to take care of it but obviously it wasn't a big deal for me so i i cleaned it and did everything so around 11 o'clock after maintenance came and they were able to even stop the water and everything this guy okay so yeah while they came to um check the tv while they, when they th when they came to remove the tv from the wall they had to turn off this um the power uh switch the main switch in the lounge area so that nothing had electrical supply at that time to just manage the situation so that there's no electric shock in the flat so she told me she said oh if this man wants to eat come call me out you know just come and call me so oh that that was solution for me so that morning the man was like oh um he was hungry i said what do you want you would like um bread egg and i think bread egg and something you know like i'm like oh how do you like the egg but the man you know couldn't express how he liked the egg then i went to our like oh sorry excuse me this man wants bread and egg he's like hey then make egg i'm like oh sorry how does he like his eggs like how do i make his eggs and then she was like oh how do you make eggs normally don't you know how to make eggs i'm like oh i can make eggs but there are different ways to make eggs but i just left her alone and i scrambled the egg <laughs> i scrambled the egg the man couldn't eat it apparently he liked omelets so she could have just told me because she works permanently on the side she knew the man better than i did and the man was sort of fond of her so she could have just told me oh he likes it as an omelette do not scramble the egg so obviously he couldn't eat the egg i had to throw the egg away but he did eat the bread um the toast okay it was toast actually toast and tea so a few hours later he was hungry for lunch he wanted beans um potatoes and um and something you know that needed so obviously the, his potatoes had to be oven baked because of his condition he doesn't eat deep fried food so uh i had to oven bake the um potatoes so this was where the problem was i never prior to that time i never used an oven before i don't think that's changed because obviously it's not not like I, I didn't know what an oven was but i've never had to bake anything and then the way the oven was even set like it was it looked complicated i'd never used it before so i, I went again to knock the door and call my dear friend i was like oh please um this man wants potato beans and this 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 and she was like then go make it i'm like oh okay please can you show me how to turn on the oven or more that's where i entered girl with this girl like she had me since the first day she has, she saw me 
she was like what do i mean i'm like oh sorry i don't know how to use the oven like i'm, I'm actually like are you telling me you have never used an oven and i was still answering that because obviously <laughs> i didn't expect what was coming after that was so i was like yes i've never used that oven before she was like ah she, she was like where are you from oh and you know foolishly <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if i should say foolishly or excitedly or the way i answer everybody oh i'm from nigeria are you telling me you people don't have oven in nigeria nobody in nigeria has an oven you don't know how to use an oven and i was just really confused i don't even know the way i'm saying it now is because i've healed from that incident because it took me a while to actually move away from that place to where i am now you know like i was actually sad for a while like i, I was like i didn't even know when i got overwhelmed i started crying like you <laughs> unfortunately in front of her <laughs> Let me cover my face for myself. Unfortunately, in front of her, I was crying because ah, nobody has insulted me like that. I was like, are you telling me that nobody in Nigeria knows how to use oven? I'm like, ha, show your mic, baby. <laughs> I was just so, I was so down and I was so sad. I was so angry at the same time. I'm like, and I didn't know what I said. I will not let you insult me like that. What does that mean? I said I didn't know how to use something. You could have said you are not helping me. If you said you are not helping me, no problem. I will look for someone else that can do it. You know, like, that was why immediately I said something back. She was, you know, like, she didn't expect me to talk back because obviously she had seen me, like, she had seen water in my eye. But, you know, she she saw that, like, I already got emotional. So, immediately I talked back, she, she was just like, oh, you're shouting, get, just leave me. You know, like, she... You know she just said something to just snub me you know and then I, I i i'm not even saying fully what she i know that part of what she said she was like oh can't you use your common sense you know literally this girl literally was abusing me like insulting me on different levels and i was so offended and i was so sad i was so offended and i was so sad and then i you know like luckily someone else came in and saw me crying and then it was a guy this one was even a wise guy and then it was like oh so what happened he showed me how to use the oven and then it was like oh take it easy you know take care and all of that you know like he just showed me what i needed to get done and all that i just started calling my classmates that were working the same agency at that time and then i started bawling on the phone i was like how oh, can she say something like that to me how can she you know like they tried to console me they were like okay i should escalate the issue i should report to the agency let the agency do something you know like then i called the agency i sent a voice note to my agency and then you know the admin picked it up luckily you know the owner of the agency was um one of their directors in the company so she was also able to pick it up because i think she was the, she was she's the only black woman among their directors so obviously she was offended on my behalf also so that gave me you know some sort of solace and you know and made me you know feel happy that i reported so obviously the director called me and then she apologized and she was like you know you know like she's going to see this through to the end and make sure that the girl apologizes and all of that you know and then so obviously gossip travel very fast <laughs> in this country you know we didn't work organization so obviously people started hearing different people came apparently there were many people on site but obviously when you're on site like that you're with your service user so you might not even see anybody so different people started coming they, they came to know they apologized in fact most of the people that came to apologize to me were white people and they were like oh um uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry. She doesn't re represent all of us here. This is not how we behave. Da, da 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 da. You know, like people actually empathized with me, and then they, they, they apologized. You know, on behalf of everybody and everything. And some people came to gossip and were like, oh she's like that she's a nasty person it's because her mom is a manager in the company and then she feels she can't get away with things if you need extra backing or if you need to drag this please report her if you need extra backing or you need somebody to you know you know also share that story or their experience with her please i'm happy to join you the person gave me his number you know like i i actually was happy the way people handled it and you know it made me feel better a bit but obviously i was hurt with the way she spoke to me because i didn't feel like i not even like i didn't feel let me not be humble about it i did not deserve it because i did not do anything wrong and if anything if i did even if i you, you don't want to help me just tell me that i'm sorry i don't want to talk to you or i don't want to help you that's better i'll look for somebody else there are different people on on site i'll have found somebody else to show me what to do you know 
and um yeah so i reported they asked me to send a mail i sent a mail the the um hr for the company itself reached out to me and then you know told me they were investigating and blah 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 but you know like i just got disinterested and you know it made me really sad that you know like i experienced something like that i didn't expect you know why why are people just me why would you be mean to someone you know you're not even white for crying out loud <laughs> but obviously I, i'm not sure she identifies as afghanian <laughs> she probably identifies as a full white person but as God we have it, she looks like she has she's um more more yellow, so <laughs> she's not even very white the way she is. But um the reason why I'm sharing this story or the reason why I decided to share this story at this time is because you know different things like this happen every day for us as you know immigrants and to us as immigrants, you know, there there's racism everywhere from you know your neighbors being unnecessarily mean at work or at the bus station different things just try your best to not let your emotions get the best of you do not let anybody make you feel lesser than you are do not let anybody make you question who you are you know like whatever they say to you or about you you know that it's not about you it's about them it's more about them you know obviously it was from my own self-esteem it was later i found out that she was just 22 years old and a college graduate i'm like dude i'm a master student in this place so and it's not even like it's my first master so you cannot even come and tell me it's not like you're smart you're not you're not even smart you're just you're just you're just there vibing you know obviously because you can walk from a young age and you're working and making money you don't look like you even have anything you're chasing in your life so you know like <laughs> i'm not trying to you know talk down at her but you know like i felt really bad and those were the ways i tried to um Help myself snap out of it and obviously my loving friends after i shared the story you know people were really kind to me and empathized with me but i actually cried because i was very sad i was very very sad because i just didn't see it happening to me someone out there that you know maybe somebody does something hurtful to you or especially when it's coming from somebody that does not that is not even your skin color or somebody that obviously feels like they're above you and all of that I feel like because of the way we we grew up or national character in nigeria of respecting everybody or you feel like somebody's your manager they're your guy you you know reports or you not do the right like go through, you don't want to go through protocols i think that most of the time you know in this place systems you know like protocols work so have your receipts with you if somebody does something to hurt you and you see that this person is doing this repeatedly document it you can write it down in your journal or something just make sure you keep the receipts and report it so that at least somebody will there somebody will if you report anything they will hear you out so report it and you just might be saving someone else from a very nasty person so obviously you can report things you can escalate issues you should be rich sure that you know like actions will be taken and just don't make anybody make you feel bad about yourself or feel worse for yourself so in this black history month i just want to encourage you as a person of color in a foreign land to be yourself and you know don't let anybody make you feel bad you know don't let anybody get to you do not let people make you feel lesser than you are you are you know value you are strong you are beautiful you're perfect and even if someone does something bad or mean to you it doesn't mean that you deserve it it just shows who the person is and you know yeah i'm just encouraging you with so much love there's so many dramas in fact there was a time that my friend told me of our experience how okay this one was not a staff you know my own was different because it was from a staff this one was a service user that eat her and really hurt her like injured her and it was the police that came to save save her and all of that so just stay safe out there you know <laughs> different kind of jobs different kind of craziness and all so um yeah i hope this story just encourages someone to speak up for themselves for themselves you know whenever something happens you know don't feel like nobody will hear you out you'll be heard out so yeah i hope <laughs> you learned one or two things from this video and you know yeah if if you resonate with the story or you know let me know what you think in the comment section and if you've had this experience before and it's getting to you or affecting your mind or just shout at me in the comment section then you know 
we can take it off from there we can have a private conversation if you want i'm not a therapist too there's only so much i can do but i know that i can talk <laughs> i know that i can talk and maybe try to encourage you out of however down you're feeling it's not easy surviving in a foreign number go with boss in jesus name <laughs> amen thank you guys if you got to this part of my story thank you so much take your kisses thank you so much for watching to this point i really hope that you know you found the video interesting and see you in my next video bye bye <laughs>